If you want to build AI automations and AI systems, but you are tired of monthly subscriptions, then this video is for you. When you self-host, you can run unlimited automations in NA10 without scaling costs. And in this video, I'll show you exactly how to self-host NA10 in under three minutes, quickly and very, very low cost. And I'm also gonna show you how to build your first AI automation. So, how to self-host NA10. I've got this kind of crazy Stranger Things vibe going on in this deck, you'll see what I mean. So, self-hosting, is great, um, you get many things. For example, one of the things you get access to is exclusive community nerds in NA10 that people develop. You get unlimited executions. Not a lot of people know, but in NA10, if you do the cloud plan, you are capped at 2.5K on the starter plan and 10K on the pro plan. You also get something really important, which is what we call data sovereignty. So for example, let's say we're working with this great chap here in the checkered shirt, and he says, hey Jack, you know, I've hired you, where is my data? And that's a question you'll get with bigger organizations that you work with. Um, if you're on the NA10 cloud plan, it's well, it's an NA10 service in Frankfurt. But if you self-host it, you're able to say, hey, it's on my own servers that I control, and you can actually decide where those servers are. So if you're tracking, you know, GDPR compliance, you can make sure that it's in a GDPR compliance zone. So very, very cool benefit. It is also cheaper. Um, specifically around about 70% cheaper depending on who you use at the time of recording. Now, you can also be ready to rock and roll and get it executed in just three minutes. But there are a couple of drawbacks I want to draw your attention to so you have a full picture of self-host versus cloud with NA10. The first one is workflow and credential sharing. So when you self-host, you don't have access to this workflow share feature. So for example, with my team, when I'm doing builds for clients, one of the things I do is I give access to those individuals to come to my account to build certain things if I want their support with that. You can't do that on the self-host side of things. Also, there are certain features in the NA10 cloud. A good example of that is the Magic AI Workflow Builder. You don't get that automatically when you self-host it. But that said, self-hosting is amazing. And with that in mind, let's actually self-host and get this set up in just a couple of minutes. Beautiful, and I've grabbed my delicious iced coffee. I'm mixing up with the iced coffee these days, guys. Now, who I personally use to self-host is hosting it. And one of the reasons why I used them initially is because it's one of the lightest touch ways to teach people how to actually get set up. And the costs of it are really, really low. Like, it's ridiculously simple. So you can head over to this. I'll put a link down below in the description so you can grab that. All we do is we choose the server location. If you're not doing client work, it doesn't really matter. And you just either pick the fastest one, but again, if you've got certain compliance things, you can then select the server, the location. All this refers to is where is the server that you're gonna be hosting your NA10 instance on. And if you work with NA10 directly, uh, which you can do when you buy a cloud plan, NA10 is hosting it for you in Germany. NA10, beautiful place, but here we're gonna be hosting ourselves. So we're just gonna go with the best latency possible and click on next. And then we can pretty much search for things we want to. So let's do for NA10. And the cool thing is NA10 plus 100 workflows, which means not only do we get NA10, but we also get 100 pre-made ready to rock and roll templates. And then we're gonna create a root password. I'm gonna use a random one that I got here. And then you click on next. Once you've done that, you can then select if you want these two things there for you. You can do daily auto backups, which is getting your VPS data backed up every day. So it's safe and ready to secure. You can pay for that as an optional upgrade, but again, that's not required. You can just click through and go on next. Then we come to select the plan. Obviously, they all have their pluses and minuses. Just to cut through it, I found KVM2 completely fine for all of my use cases personally. It's a great middle ground of performance and price. It's really cheap. I think they even have something on right now for Black Friday. Um, very, very easy. So I just literally choose KVM2 personally. I think it's great. You can always click down and see all the features, but it, it's just the best one I've seen. So we click on this one. We select plan duration. Obviously, the longer that you have the plan on for, the cheaper it gets, but you can just pick what you want to there. Then once you've selected it and you've paid some gold coins, for the thing, it's very, very cool. Now remember, compared to NA10's annual plan, it's roughly $240, so you can save like 70% based on the plan that you go for, which is really cool. So what's gonna happen now is hosting's gonna load up, and we're gonna be able to activate our scenario. Then once you've completed the payment, you're gonna see this screen, which basically just is hosting and setting it up. This can take just a couple minutes, and then you're ready to rock and roll. Once that's complete, you'll see this page here. So what we're going to do is come down here to manage VPS, which is great. So this is effectively where you'll now run NA10, and it's completely self-hosted in your own location which is code for really cool news. But now we've done that, let's actually get it loaded and do a couple of things I can show you that. I'm also gonna show how you can update NA10 as well so you get the latest version all the time. Not a lot of people know that you need to do that. It's because they're always running updates and you can obviously, we wanna make sure it's accurate so you get the latest features. So all we do is we come down to manage app. We open this into a new tab. 
give this a hot second. We're going to create a brand new account. So I'm going to give it some information and the password. I'll give it this one here. Come down and click on next. And then what NA10 will do here is actually send you an email. So we're going to skip all that sort of stuff. Send me a free license key. Beautiful. So we do this and then just go over to your email address. You'll see an email with a big, bright, beautiful orange button. I want you to click that to say activate and then your license is officially activated, then you're ready to go. So let's come back now to the homepage here and we should see everything here. Now look guys, we've got over 100 workflows ready to rock and roll. So I can just open one for instance and see what it's about. You can play around with it, it all comes with instructions and we are ready to go. But what we are going to do is actually come down and create our very first workflow. But before I do that, I have to show you how to update it in the cloud. I'm also gonna show you what trips people up with webhooks and HTTP requests, just to make sure that you're ready to rock and roll. So I have a scenario that I made earlier on a different account and it says, look, critical update available. Jack, you've got to update it. And I was like, oh my gosh, we need to update this, right? So how on earth do we actually do that? So you can see this account I've got here is, it is not up to date. And obviously there's problems with that, you don't get the latest features, it's not great. So when you want to update something, Okay, what you do is come back to the homepage. Let me find one that hasn't been updated in a while. Uh, let's have a look at this one. Okay, so if I come down here and manage this one, you'll see you know, it's got different information. You can see a bit of a dashboard here. But if you click on how to update NATM, you click on this button, opens a new page. Okay, and this is great to know, guys, like just for when you're doing it. As you can see, it has all this information. So all you're literally going to do is copy and paste these commands, which is absolutely fine. So you can see the first thing we do is go to the browser terminal like so. So we come over here and then we come down to terminal. Now, terminal is just, you know, the terminal on your laptop, for example, is how you talk to your computer. Here, we're just kind of interacting with the server, like via this whole system. So you see what looks like code, looks like we're kind of near in the matrix, about to uh, defeat some Mr. Smiths. In reality, guys, that is kind of what is happening here. So we paste in the text, which is Docker Compose Pull. Do we need to understand strictly all the things that are happening? No, not really. You just need to push the buttons and everything's okay. So we do this, we're gonna come back over to, where are we right now? Uh, okay, this one. Then what you're gonna do is copy this and come straight back over. So give us a hot second. And all those green ticks are code for great news. So once that's done, we can just enter the next thing in. Obviously we've got, um, I think just a few more things to do and it's ready to rock and roll. Yeah, you can actually see, you see whenever it's got this thing here, that means that it's loading. That's kind of its way of just saying that it's kind of running a couple of things. Beautiful, and we've got all the ticks, which is what we like to see. So we just enter the next thing here, which is Docker Compose Down, and then let that work in the background. And then once that is complete, the last thing we want to enter in is Docker Compose Up uh, hyphen D. So we come back over. Again, this is not doing it itself, which is cool. Just gives a second because it is loading. Looks like that's complete. And we just see the final one here. And once this is done, we'll have a fully up-to-date NA10 scenario. And you just run this periodically, just to make sure you've got the latest version, because NA10 will ship features and they will make it available in the cloud. Uh, you know, when, when you're self-hosting it. So this looks complete. So if I come back over now to my environment here, you'll be able to see that it's fully up to date and you can see that the documentation's there, which is excellent news. And now we've sorted out the renewal, which you just need to do that periodically. But the homepage, you'll see this. And these are just all instances that you've created on any 10. You can do as many of these as you want to, or as few. You may have one for different clients. It's very cool. Obviously, you can rename and do lots of different things. So what we're gonna come down here is come down to manage, and then we'll come down here to manage app. And that's basically all you do when you wanna access this any 10. It's very cool. And as you can see, we've got lab pre-built scenarios, which is ace. So we come down here to create workflow, and then we have this. If you click on settings down in the bottom left, if you go into personal, you can do things like change the uh, theme. So we'll change this to dark mode, for example. And then you can see on the left hand side here, you're going to see something for community, uh, which is just down here on the left, which is community nodes. And you can literally install the community nodes there, and then you're ready to go. And then you've got obviously M MCP access, lots of different things that you can do. It's really, really cool. There's lots of cool stuff you can play around with here, but without getting too much into that for a skip of the video. So let's build a scenario together that is very cool. I'll show you a very traditional one. So what we're gonna do first of all is add in a form, an N8N form. Beautiful. Now, anything you build in N810, all these no-code builders, will typically have an input, some kind of data input, could be Slack, could be email, could be anything, text message, WhatsApp. We've done loads of these on the channel and lots of builds in the community that cover this sort of stuff. I'm gonna show you an example of a form and then we're gonna build an AI agent together that itself is gonna be able to create an email um, based on what that form says. So let's just say this is the form that we've created to share with our clients, like an onboarding form, okay? So if we say, hey, which is onboarding, okay? Form description is something like, um, 
welcome to the team. Okay, something really simple. And of course, guys, we are nothing without our beautiful emojis. Let's give us a big, nice, beautiful wave. And then we just specify form elements. Now, typically speaking, I like to build these forms on things like a paper form or jot form, just because I like more of the creativity, but you can do it just the same in any time for a minimal viable product, which is great. So if I just said, hey, name, which is text, and we'll say John, and then we add another one, I could make that required field, and then we'll just have one here, which is email. Again, you can actually specify email. And then finally, we could have something interesting here like uh, income level, okay? And then we could say something like, again, you can make this a drop down like this if you want to, and then option could be something like, you know, zero to $10,000 a month. And then second option could be something like $10,000 a month to $100,000. Cool, and we're done. And once you've done that, that's all finished. You can come down, you can click on Exit Workflow. This will open a new page, and then we have our form, name, email, income level, cool. And we've only made the name feel required. You can make as many as you want to that are required. So I can come down here, for example, and then you just mark this for it to be a required field, which is code for very, very cool. Now, the next thing we wanna do is, let's say we wanna bring out an agent. Now, you don't have to bring out an agent. Basically, you only bring out an agent if you wanted to do complex reasoning, but I just wanna show you the agent functionality. Realistically here, we probably would just have AI create something that's quite interesting. So probably what I'm gonna do here, if I come down for an AI, let's grab this here, okay. And we're gonna give him a chat model. So let's give him chat GPT. So we're gonna come down here for open AI. Beautiful, now we need to connect it, right? Because there's no credentials. So to do that, we are gonna come over to platform.openai.com. Uh, not forward slash assistance, great. And once you're on that, let me just come to the correct website real quick. Okay, great, let me log in. Now once you're logged in, now previously you'll have used chatgpt.com, this platform here just lets us get API keys and then connect those and do whatever we want to. So all you do is come down to create new secret key, you give this one something like NA10 test 123, which is beautiful, create a secret key, you'll get a big API key, you're just gonna copy that. You'll need to deposit a couple of dollars, like five dollars or something, it's, it's actually really cheap, to be honest with you, it's not that expensive. So you come back over, create new credential, all you're gonna do is throw that API key in there, click save, and then we have officially created a credential, which is cool. So then we can maybe give this a little bit of a test. To test it, we can probably just come down here, add in a chat trigger, which is cool. This just lets us chat with the scenario really easily. So if I bring this up, we do this, and you can click on open chat. So now we have two ways we can start the workflow. Actually, workflow open chat, I can say, hey, you know, how about who was the tallest person to ever live? Whatever you want to, right? And then we hit enter. And then we've not really given it any prompt, but this should connect fine. And it should come back and say Robert Wardlow, eight foot 11. There you go. And so now we've connected chat GPT, which is really, really cool. Cool, so that's good. And we've now validated that it works. Let's actually build it into a little bit of an automation. So we're gonna get this, we're gonna take the chat window. I'm gonna say, guys, your services are no longer required. Get out of here. So he's gone. Now we've got the form submission, which is cool. And then let's just give this a little bit of a prompt. So come down here, connect chat trigger, trigger node, which is cool. Now the user message, no. So we're gonna come down here, add an options. We wanna add a system message. Think of this as just your instruction manual. So here, for example, we're gonna say something like, you are going to receive information about an individual, an income amount, their name. I'd like you to draft me a very clear, concise email as an output and output it in standard English. Whatever, something really, really simple. Again, I'm oversimplifying it, but I just want you to create your first one in your new scenario if you haven't had a chance to do that yet, okay? So what we're gonna do here is just execute previous nodes real quick and get sample data. So we can call this name, email at email.com, and then income level is gonna be this. Beautiful, so we, so we submit that, and now you see we get all this information here. So what we do is we need to tell us agent, what information do you want me to use? So I come down here, I click on define below, and then I just grab the name, which is name, okay? I grab the email, it doesn't need to know the email to be fair, and I just grab the email uh, income level. You can give it and feed it any information you want to. And you can see here it's using JSON, which is like code, but it also shows you what this is. So if I change that, it'd be something else, which is really cool, right? Then what we want to do is give it a tool. So we're gonna give it, we can give it as many tools as we want to. In this example, I'm gonna come down and give it Gmail, right? Because we want to be able to send an email. So click on Gmail tool, which is cool, but we need to select and create a credential. So to do that, this is probably one of the most difficult credentials to integrate if you're just starting out, but I'm gonna show you how to do it exactly step by step. So to do this, click on create new credential. Now here's what I want you to do. I want you to go over to this website here, which is 
console.cloud.google.com. I'll put a link down below for you, which is really cool. And all you're going to do is come down to this project section here, and you're going to click on new projects. And then we're going to give this a name. Let's call this one NATAN hosting uh, example. And then you just come down and click on create. And then this will start to develop and create the, the actual environment and be done in literally seconds, which is awesome. So once that's done, we're going to click on select project and let that load up in the background. So then we come over to the top left like here, and we're going to come down to API and services, and then you come down to OAuth consent screen. And once that's done, I'm going to come down here, click on get started. Beautiful. So now here, the first thing to do is grab a Gmail API. So come over here and just type in Gmail API. And there we go. Beautiful. We click on this guy. And now we're going to just install and activate it. So let's enable the Gmail API. Give that a beautiful second. And then it's going to be fully integrated and ready to go. So this is fantastic. Then we can come down here to OAuth consent screen on the left-hand side. And then we're going to click on Get Started to configure the application. We'll give it a name. I'm going to go for N8N Jack hosting it. And then for user support email, just enter in your email address that you're going to be using. And then we'll come down and click on next. And you get to decide if the audience is internal or external. And since I have my own Google account, I'm going to go internal because I'm going to limit it to that. But if you don't, you'd need to click on external. Then for contact information, just enter in the same email address once more. Come down, click next. And then you agree to the terms and conditions. Click continue. And then you click create to do this part of the process. Then we'll come here to create a worth client on the right hand side. Let that load up real quick. Beautiful application type is going to be web application, which is great. The name we're going to add here, guys, I'm going to call this one again, and it's an hosting uh, jack, which is great. And then what we need to do is come down to authorized redirect your right. So click on add your right. Then, guys, come back to any turn, and you see this thing here, just copy it. One click copy, and we're done. That's how simple this is. Come down, enter it in, and we are ready to go. And with that, we can actually create the application real quick. Beautiful. That'll take a couple of minutes to rock and roll. And there we are. We've got the client ID. Fantastic. Let me just copy this. Now that's done. The next thing I want to do is come down here on the left-hand side, click on this. I'm going to come down again to the APIs and services and come down to OAuth consent screen. Then come back over to your Gmail, guys. Put this in for client ID. And then we come back over here, and you'll see the client secret. So we'll just copy this, which is great. And then come back over, and then you're going to drop this one here into the client secret. Then we click on save. Now, once you actually added guys the client ID and the client secret you can click on sign in with Google real quick and then you can actually set the account on the left hand side just to make sure it's validated and connected and there we go we can give it the access that we're happy with we come down here we click on allow and then the connection is successful which means that it is now officially connected and then what we can do down here guys on this and I'll just show you what I mean on the subject we can actually press this button here which lets the AI dynamically create the subject we can click on the message which lets the, AI, which lets the AI dynamically create that and then what we can do probably is to decide whether it wants to be a message or a draft. So if I say it's a draft and it can create it, I'm going to come down here, we're going to execute the scenario. I'm going to say my name is Jack, my email is jack at aiautomationjack.com, and my income level is this. Then I click on submit. This one works in the background. You can see that submission data has come in. It's now working in the background, and it has successfully created a draft. So let's go to our inbox now and see what that draft looks like. And just like that, we've got a custom email. We've got a unique subject message based on information. Dear Jack, I hope this message finds you well. I'm writing to confirm the income range you provided, which is ten dollars to $100,000 a month. And you have crushed it. You've built something on a VPS, which very few people know how to do. And you've actually built your very first automation, which you can save, rock and roll, and have a great time. And I'll put a link down below so you can get started and build this yourself. Now you know some of the basics of creating AI automations. The next step is to learn about AI applications and AI apps to really find out the, the art of what is possible. And you can do that by watching this video right here.